Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a doctor working in Cambridge. And in this video, we're talking about iPhone cameras. Now, the iPhone is Apple's best-selling product line, and it is the main reason why they are the most valuable company in the world. And so it's very much in Apple's best interests to gently encourage us to upgrade our iPhones every year. If you're like me, you would have seen the marketing videos and thought, damn, I really want one of these shiny new iPhones. But if you're like me and we have to justify the purchase to our parents and to ourselves, we can't really say that, oh, I just want that new iPhone because it looks shiny. We have to give what looks to be a good reason for that. And this year, the good reason that Apple gave us was all about the cameras. But as you might know, if you've seen any of my previous videos, I'm a big fan of really overthinking purchases and specifically tech purchases to A, be more intentional with upgrading and B, to try and maximize the happiness and value that I derive from spending money on buying new tech products. And so in this attempted piece of investigative journalism, we're gonna be comparing the cameras across the last five years worth of iPhones and trying to figure out if there's really a noticeable difference and if that difference is enough to warrant upgrading your iPhone. As usual, to save you time, I'm gonna start with the conclusion. And then if you're interested in watching more of the video, we'll talk about the main camera, the selfie camera, the ultra wide, the telephoto, portrait mode, and then we'll do a video test of the various cameras. In the video description and in the pinned comment, you will find timestamps to all of these various sections. So please feel free to skip around the video if you feel like it. And a big thank you to Daniel Wellington for sponsoring the video. This is their iconic watch range, which I will show you in full video form at the end of the video when we're gonna be testing the various video capabilities of all these various iPhones. So stay tuned for that. So after doing some semi-extensive testing, I came to three conclusions. Firstly, I think the ultra wide lens, the new one on the 11 and the 11 Pro is actually pretty good. Secondly, I came to the realization that actually the iPhone 8, which is now available for like $450, is actually really solid and takes fantastic photos and is a fantastic budget option. And finally, I realized that all of this stuff, comparing cameras is all pretty pointless because to be honest, if we really think about why we're taking photos, most of us are in the position where we're taking photos in order to make memories that we can maybe look back on later. And so realistically, even though we all like watching these camera comparison videos, we're never gonna be in a situation where we're actually comparing these images side by side. And for the last three, four, five plus years, the cameras we've had on phones have been so good that no one looks at these photos and thinks, oh damn, I wish the quality was a little bit better or this isn't enough of a happy memory captured by this particular phone. And so partly the conclusion I came to after doing all this testing is that this whole camera comparison stuff is really overhyped. Obviously, it's an Apple's best interest to tell us, oh, like, oh my God, this camera is amazing. It's gonna change your life. But you know, if we're on a budget or if we can't justify you know, spending $700 to upgrade our iPhone every year, then we shouldn't feel bad about not upgrading our iPhone. And I think one thing that I wanna get through in this video is that it's really hard to tell the difference between an iPhone 8, 10, 10R, 10S, 11, 11 Pro. It's genuinely really hard to tell the difference. So with that bit of unsolicited preaching out of the way, let's now talk about the various cameras on the new iPhones and let's start with the wide angle. So the wide angle lens is the standard lens that's been on iPhones since the dawn of time. It is the normal lens. They're just calling it the wide because technically in camera terminology, it is quite a wide lens. So to test out these lenses, I put a message on my Instagram story and I asked for volunteers to come into Cambridge Town Center and to help me with some filming and four very kind new friends showed up. So we all met up at Downing College, which is one of the 31, I think, colleges that make up the University of Cambridge. And this is a photo of one of their student accommodation buildings. And even if we're directly comparing the different cameras side by side, side, I think, at least to my eyes, it is quite hard to tell the difference between all of these shots. And yeah, I'm sure if you zoomed in and looked at the angles and the corners and stuff, you probably would see a difference, but those aren't the things that we actually do when we look at a photo. Like, we, we never zoom in to see what the vignetting on the lens is. So to me, all that matters in these camera comparisons is can I tell off the bat just by looking at the photo that this is a nicer photo than what I'm used to? Shot number two, some fairly random flowers in Downing College. And now we're adding in the iPhone 7 for comparison as well. I think the iPhone 7 does look objectively a little bit worse than the iPhone 8 and above, which is kind of interesting because it's actually got exactly the same camera as the iPhone 8. It's just that the image processing in the iPhone 8 improved. Regardless, the iPhone 7 isn't available anyway anymore. So really the only comparisons that make sense are iPhone 8, iPhone 10R, and iPhone 11, because those are the ones that you can buy from the Apple website. Let's now try a photo of me in Downing College. Again, iPhone 7, you can sort of tell that it's not very good because the highlights are blown up. Although objectively, still not too bad a photo. If all we had was an iPhone 7, we would take that photo and think, oh damn, this is a pretty good photo. But then if we look at iPhone 8 and above, then we can really see the detail in the sky if that matters to us. And again, I can't really tell the difference between the eight, the 10 and the 11. And here are some more side-by-side -side comparison shots. And again, hopefully this reiterates that in normal circumstances with normal camera shooting, you know, taking photos of food, taking photos of each other, 
it really is quite hard to tell the difference between the iPhone 8, the iPhone 10, and the iPhone 11. So that was a comparison of the wide lens, i.e. the default normal lens that we've all been used to shooting with our smartphones. Let's now talk about the second most important lens, and that is the front-facing selfie camera. And again, if we focus on just the iPhone 8, the iPhone 11, and the iPhone 10R slash 10S, you would expect there to be some differences. And indeed there was. Uh, I posted this photo to my Twitter, which was a comparison between a selfie taken with the 10S Max versus with the 11 Pro Max. And for the most part, people realized which one was which. Although the percentage is still quite high for the iPhone 10S Max, so that sort of shows that on a, yeah, most people really can't tell the difference. And now doing another real world photo test. So while we were filming on this day, I took selfies with all the various iPhones and I've taken them into Lightroom and done the standard editing that I would in order to post them to Instagram. And now here is what they look like on my Instagram. And I wonder if you can really tell the difference between them. So shot number two here is actually the one taken with the iPhone 11. I, I can tell that it's just a little bit better than the others. But again, like even if I took shot number four, which was just taken with the iPhone 7, which is like four years old at this point, if I saw that shot, it would have the exact same memory value to me as the shot taken with the iPhone 11. Like, yeah, the iPhone 11 is objectively a little bit nicer, but what difference does that really make to anyone unless you're comparing them side by side? Here are some more shots with the selfie camera. And again, you can decide for yourself if the improvement in selfie image quality warrants spending all that money to upgrade the iPhone. I personally don't really think it does. And I'll put a Google Drive link to all of these photos in their highest resolution down in the video description. So if you want to download these and compare them for yourselves and kind of zoom into the corners and do whatever you want to do, whatever makes you happy, then by all means, feel free to do that. Okay, let's now talk about the ultra wide lens. And that is the standout feature for this year's iPhones in the iPhone 11 and the 11 Pro. If you're into photography, it means you can get some kind of nice architecture shots, some interior design shots, that sort of thing. But if you're like me and don't really care about that sort of photography, then I actually think the ultra wide lens is pretty good for getting photos of people in a group setting a little bit easier. And the ultra wide mode also kind of works in selfie mode whereby you can zoom out a little bit from the standard selfie position that we're used to. I don't know, maybe that contributes to a higher quality memory. Okay, let's talk about the telephoto lens now. And there's a lot of confusion about this when I've spoken to people. This iPhone 11 Pro has three lenses on it, wide, ultra wide, and telephoto, whereas the iPhone 11, no, this is not the 11. <laughs> this is the 11. Whereas the iPhone 11 has two lenses on it, the wide and the ultra wide. Now, is the telephoto lens actually useful? I mean, we've had telephoto lenses on the iPhone since the iPhone 7 Plus. That was like the sellout feature of the 7 Plus. It had two lenses, one was a telephoto. And I've been a plus size model <laughs> iPhone user for since the 7 Plus. And to be honest, I have almost never found myself needing to use the telephoto lens. Here are some photos that you can take standing in the same spot. This is a shot of the Downing student accommodation with the normal wide lens. This is what it looks like with the ultra wide from the same spot. And if we zoom in telephoto wise, then we can get these slightly more zoomed in detail shots if we're so inclined. Now, I've spoken to people about this on the internet. It seems like there is one school of people who really love the telephoto lens. And for those people, it's, you know, it's a no brainer to get the iPhone 11 Pro because you have the telephoto lens on it and it's pretty good. But then for most people, it seems like we, we don't actually use the telephoto lens. Like I honestly can't remember the last time I found myself wanting to use the the telephoto lens and so for me the iPhone 11 where is it this one the iPhone 11 is perfect because it's got the wide and the ultra wide and actually in a way I kind of regret going for the 11 Pro Max on the Apple upgrade program I should have just gone for the iPhone 11 but hey what can you do Let's quickly talk about night mode as well, and that is another feature available only on the iPhone 11s. So the other day I was on a night shift in my hospital and I took some of these shots. So is night mode useful? I think it sort of is, but in very specific circumstances. Like I don't really go around much at night taking photos, but I suspect that if I knew I had the option of night mode, I probably would take a few more photos. And actually the other day, me and my mom and uncle were roaming around St. Albans, which is the town that my family live in. Uh, we came across the cathedral and my mom and uncle wanted a photo by the cathedral. Now normally this would be a really hard photo to take and you wouldn't get any decent results out of it because of the backlight coming from the cathedral and the lack of, the lack of light going on their faces. But using the night mode on the iPhone 11, I managed to take this shot, which is in kind of going back to this whole thing about making memories. It is a memory now of the two of them by this cathedral, which looks kind of nice. Obviously it's really grainy and it's not a great photo, but the point is that the memory exists and the memory wouldn't have existed if I didn't have night mode. Finally, on the photo front, let's talk about portrait mode. Now, the annoying thing about portrait mode in the past is that it used to use the telephoto lens. So this is the Tennis Max. It's got the wide and the telephoto. And so in order to get a portrait mode photo, you'd have to go quite far away from people. Often I'd find myself wanting to take these when I was at a restaurant with people, but I wouldn't be able to because it would just be, there wouldn't be enough light and it would be 
too close to the person if they're just sitting across from me. But now, because the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro have the wide and ultra wide lenses, it means we can take portrait mode photos without having to step really far back and use the telephoto. So this is quite nice. Again, going back to our thing of making memories, does it make for a better memory if you have a portrait mode versus a normal photo? I kind of think it does. Like, I really like the aesthetic of the blurred background bokeh, and that is, so, I think, the main reason why when we look at a photo taken with a proper camera, we think, damn, that's a good photo. It's usually because the background is blurred to some degree. And so I quite like having portrait mode, and I think it is a definite improvement having it using the ultra wide lens, which means we're not faffing around trying to go backwards and forwards, trying to get that perfect shot. That was it from the photo front. Just as a, an interim conclusion on that front, I think the iPhone 11 is really the sweet spot. It's $700 or 729 pounds in the UK, but I think the iPhone 11 is actually really good bang for buck because you get the ultra wide lens, you get the night mode, you get the portrait mode. Yeah, the wide lens is basically the same as every other iPhone. If you're on, if you're on any kind of budget, then the, the main point I wanna make is that you don't need to upgrade your iPhone just for the camera because honestly it doesn't make that much difference. And if you wanna move into iPhone, but you're on a tight budget, then the iPhone 8 for $469 at the moment is actually a really solid option. And yeah, you don't get these fancy features like ultra wide and portrait mode, but you get like a really solid phone that gets you into the Apple ecosystem. And I'll make another video about this where I talk about Apple versus Android and why I just love Apple products. But I think the more Apple products you have, the more they synergize with one another, with one another and the better the whole overall experience becomes. And I don't think, just speaking to my friends who've got Android phones, that you really get that with Android. But, you know, let's not start a flame war in the comments because it doesn't really matter. The point is, iPhone 11, really good value for money. iPhone 8, really solid as well. iPhone 11 Pro, probably not unless you're desperate for the telephoto. I kind of regret getting this. But now let's move on from photos and talk about the video capabilities of these iPhones. Okay, so to end, we're gonna do some video comparisons of the iPhone 11 Pro, the iPhone 10s, the iPhone 11, and the iPhone 8. And because this video is very kindly sponsored by Daniel Wellington, I'm gonna take this opportunity to tell you about their new Iconic Link watch range. With a modern take on a classic design, the Iconic Link is the long-awaited and much-anticipated revelation behind three years of meticulous craftsmanship and design. The new Iconic Collection by Daniel Wellington continues the brand's founding principles of creating timeless and elegant, yet expressive pieces. The iconic link features a luxurious metal bracelet with three piece links. Each segment is composed of solid steel, individually crafted pieces in an elegantly tapered form, ensuring a seamless transition from case to clasp. The butterfly clasp comfortably secures the watch to the wrist and conceals the two button fastening mechanism, keeping the perpetual flow of the bracelet the distinctive and sculptural lines of the raised midpiece blend effortlessly with the watch case as the signature 12 index dial takes on a renewed modern silhouette. The iconic link is available in polished steel 316L with a vibrant silver finish or with refined rose gold plating. The Daniel Wellington iconic watch collection works whether you're in the boardroom or at the ski slopes. With a dash of sartorial elegance and timeless design, it really is the watch for everyone. So if you fancy checking out the iconic link range or any of the other Daniel Wellington fantastic watches, you can pop into a Daniel Wellington store or you can go online at danielwellington.com and you can use the coupon code aliabdal to get 15% off your order. Isn't that exciting? So yeah, that was a camera comparison of the iPhone 8 versus the iPhone 10 versus 11 versus 11 Pro, like whatever. Um, like I said at the beginning, like Apple loves to tell us that we, we should be upgrading our cameras. And when watching camera comparison videos and reviews and stuff, like we all like all YouTubers just focus, focus a lot on the camera. And I think that's fine because we're all interested in tech and the camera does get an upgrade every year. But when it really comes down to it, the main point of taking these photos, at least to me, maybe I'm wrong, feel free to disagree with me in the comments. The main point of taking these photos and videos and stuff is to make memories and to tell stories. And for the last five plus years, it really hasn't mattered what camera you have to make those memories or to tell those stories. And unless you're looking for something very specific, like, you know, you really like the ultra wide lens and you want to take sprawling landscapes or architect photos, or you really love portrait mode and you want to be able to do that, then fair enough. Then it kind of makes sense to upgrade your iPhone but there's so many different factors that come into whether a purchase is worth it, whether it's worth upgrading based on our own circumstances, our own budget, what we're trying to get out of it, all these things. And I'm gonna make a video about that once I can formulate my own thoughts on this. But yeah, hopefully this was semi-useful as a camera comparison. Main conclusion, I think, iPhone 11 is pretty solid. Um, secondary conclusion, the iPhone 8 is actually really good as well. And I suppose, realistically, 
we don't actually compare cameras side by side. So it doesn't actually make us any happier to have an iPhone that takes a very slightly nicer photo if you compare it side by side. Because as we hopefully saw from this camera comparison, and if you look through my Instagram, you'll see some more comparisons. It really is quite hard to tell the difference between the iPhone 8, 10, 10R, 10S, 11, and 11 Pro. Like it really is quite difficult. So yeah, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, then I'm gonna put another video here of my iPhone 11 and 11 Pro reviews, which are coming out very soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.